fortunate to have all of you guys. Thank you so much. Why don't we give them a big round of applause? To your life and to others' life by taking pictures. Okay. So, uh, how many of you are commercial photographers here? What do you mean commercial? I mean, who, money who make money, make a living from photography. <coughs> okay, quite a lot of them. So, uh, I assume half, more than half of you don't make money from photography. So, how many of you can raise your hands if you just take pictures for yourself? Okay, quite a lot of you. Okay. So, uh, let me ask you this question. What do you do with your pictures? What do you do with your pictures? You post on social media and you get some likes. And that keeps you motivated to, you know, keep on going, and you invest more on equipment. Yeah. So that's how life goes on, right? So I am a travel photographer. Okay. So my my dream of life is to see India. So I have traveled quite a lot of. Uh, so I've been shooting since about 25 years. I started with a film camera, and uh, and then when I was in college, I got my first digital camera, Sony CyberShot, and then uh, when I got my first job, I got myself a DSLR and. And then I have been shooting uh, traveling places, so I was into an IT job for quite a long time and uh, and in between I was going around taking pictures and uh, and shooting, okay. And uh, now since I am a travel photographer, I want to take a, I want to capture the flavor of the place. It can be a landscape, it can be a, the culture of the place or festivals and and of course people. So people is something which I always avoided because I was very uncomfortable when I want to talk to people. Okay. It was very difficult for me to go and ask people, can I take your picture please? So that was something which I have been avoiding for about five, for five years of my photography does not have any portraits at all. So I was shooting only things that were dead. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, of course I can't say landscapes are dead, but uh, probably monuments, uh, maybe uh, going in the wood and are taking those pictures. But I realized that if I'm not shooting people, then I'm losing out a lot because people constitute such an amazing part of the culture of India. We look so different. If you go 500 miles, you will see that we look so different. We dress so differently. Uh, we speak. We don't speak the same language. Okay. So, so then I I kind of uh, got myself, you know, uh, getting little courage and started improving and slowly. Uh, not very confidently going and asking people, so some people will say, okay, take my picture, some people would refuse taking a picture. And then uh, all of a sudden I got all these powers to shoot people. You know what happened? I got married. <laughs> okay. And uh, fortunately my wife is also a photographer. She is sitting here. So uh, she would take a picture and I would take a picture behind her. So that's how I did a lot of my pictures. It's always uh, good to, when I'm traveling, it's always good to uh, travel with female photographers because it's easy to approach people when you have a picture. So as years passed by, I accumulated a lot of pictures. So some of them I use for my uh, the articles that I write for my for magazines or uh, some which I put in my blog. But there are a lot of them. So 80% of the pictures were useless. So I thought they were useless. Useless. Okay. And especially the people pictures. So some ordinary picture somebody has asked me to take, I have taken just for the sake of uh, their happiness and I, and I thought I don't know what I am going to do with the pictures. And I am sure everybody has a lot of these pictures which you don't know what to do. I am talking specifically about people pictures. So uh, then I started organizing uh, this tour so I go back to places, sometimes uh, we travel a lot to, we go to the same places again and, uh, and then once I thought, so I have these pictures which, are, which I think are useless and uh, maybe technically also not that great but uh, what can I do with them? So I thought this time I am going to take print of all the pictures and I am going to gift it to the people. So about 5 years back, so that was the, the first time I took about 200 prints of the pictures and uh, it's uh, fairly easy to locate those people. So when you go to this small village and you ask a person uh, where is this person so you would point it to the house and then you can go and, and then you can give the print. And then that gave me a lot of happiness when I saw when I when I went to people's houses and gifted the pictures to them, and they would probably not even remember that you have taken a picture of them. And 
the, the delight that I saw in their on their faces that really encouraged me, and that really changed my view of what is a great picture. So for me, that was a very ordinary picture which was lying in my high drive, good for nothing, but that picture gave so much of happiness to somebody. Okay, and now I do it on a regular basis, and uh, as I do this. I have experienced a lot of very interesting story and uh, one of the stories I would tell you is uh, about one one lady, so there is a village called Chitpul in Himachal Pradesh, it is the last village in India, Okay, so uh, beyond that is the ITVP camp and then we have Tibet. So when I went there, uh, so I took a picture of a gentleman who was uh, probably of my age and I remembered his house because he, there was an ibex horn in front of his house, so I went there and uh, I took a picture of uh, one young gentleman. So I I knocked the door, and uh, that lady opened the door, and uh, I gave that picture to uh, to that lady, and I said, uh, "Where is this gentleman?" So she said that uh, I am his wife, and uh, my husband died in a road accident just a couple of months back. Okay, so for me it was a very ordinary picture, but for her she would probably treasure it for her lifetime. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. So. So that really change of what I think about my pictures. Okay. So now I could I would uh, take a lot of pictures and and just give it to people. So I have done a lot here in Hyderabad when I go to the flower market or the vegetable market. So I I make it an effort. So now it has become very easy. If at all you don't have time to print, you can send them on WhatsApp, which is very easy. But if you take a print, it has a different, very different impact because it is paper. Real paper, real ink spread on paper, and it gives a different feeling. And I'm sure you might have some really old pictures of your grandfather or your or your parents. The kind of feeling that you get in those pictures is just amazing. So that's what I have been doing uh, consistently. And uh, I'm going to show you some of my pictures that uh, not I have taken, but uh, when I visited these places, and maybe I'll just speak a few words about these. So this is in a monastery uh, in Zanskar. So this is in Karsa. So Karsa village is uh, the festival happens, and uh, this guy was not ready to, not uh, allowing me to take a picture, but he was so delighted when he saw his picture. When I went after a couple of years, and uh, I gave him a print, so he was really very happy to see this. So this lady, I, I shot her about uh, seven or eight years back. So those days uh, she used to work in a field. Uh, this is in a village called Kibbat where uh, our friend Ismail used to uh, go for uh, uh, these snow leopards. So she used to work in a village and uh, and, and she, I took her picture in a village where she is working in the fields or probably coming back from the fields. And now she is uh, no more physically fit to work in the field. So uh, she just sits at home, she just prays and uh, living a, a life of an old Buddhist monk. And uh, I went to her house, it was a little difficult to locate her house, but I went and uh, and they were so happy to see us. Because nobody comes to visit, I mean of course they have the family members and uh, her uh, daughter was so happy that uh, she gifted us. You see these, uh, these, uh, these people, they are not very rich but they have a very big heart. So they gave, they gave us uh, small socks. Okay, so uh, we don't have, have kids, but uh, so we, we gifted it to our uh, my brother's uh, daughter. So they gave us small socks for the kids. So there was one more occasion where. So this is the post office, the highest post office in the world. So this this is the postmaster and uh, his son. So a lot of I have just uh, lot of these uh, situations where you know people have. Uh, and this is another way to connect to people. When you go back to the places next time and uh, you you talk to them, you will see that you make friends very easily. So be, uh, the places where you don't ac get access to, now they are like your family members. They invite you home. They will not let you go without drinking a cup of tea. So that's how the change it brings when you can bring a print. Okay. So it's a 
very interesting exercise like a puzzle to go and ask people. Some people are available, some are not, so I have to give it to their relatives. But I try to make it a point to, to so that it reaches the right person. So I also send a lot of pictures uh, by post. So for them, I don't have a feedback. Some people, I leave my phone number so some people call me back. But uh, yeah, so if I, I try to make it a point to give them personally, so if that is possible. So uh, yeah, it, it is possible because uh, I kind of go back to a lot of places again and again. And if I have time, I probably uh, give my camera, I, I uh, you know, ask them to take some pictures. So, so this old man, so I'll tell you another story of this. So this old man, the first time I, I went there, so, so I took his, uh, took his picture. The next time I went there, he was there. I gifted a picture to him. He was very happy to see me. So he asked me to drink tea. So we spent some time in his home. So I said, I'm with a group of 10 people. So uh, so he said, no, no, you don't worry. You come in. So we had tea. And uh, the third time I met him, when well, actually I did not meet him. Uh, meet him. So I went to his house and, uh, and I asked for him. They said that uh, he is no more. And I could see the same picture on the wall. Okay, so this is the kind of impact that you get. So I was very sad not to see him, but uh, I was glad that uh, my picture, my useless picture was put into some use there. So if you see, technically it was a really bad picture in taking in hard light, not any, you know, not a great picture, but yeah, for some people it can be, it can mean a lot to them. Okay. Here you can see how uh, sometimes when I when I have these village kids, I, I let them play with my camera and uh, help them take pictures. So I told uh, this other guy that uh, whenever you are using a camera, you first have to put the cra camera strap on your <laughs> shoulder so that the camera does not fall. fall. So you see the other guy is helping him to, to do that. So a lot of times I, I uh, meet people who have uh, put on weight or some people who have gone thin or some people who are uh, uh, sick. So, uh, but it's always good to go back and meet them. So this guy told you are the, we, so many people have taken my picture, but you are the first person who is uh, giving a print uh, back to me. So, so uh, you know, it, it makes job for uh, photographers quite easy. So when you go to a place like, uh, this place called Kumartundi in uh, Kolkata where they make this Durga idols. When you go there, you see, you, you, that place is always clocked with uh, photographers. People go there, take pictures, get awards, but nobody thinks about the subjects whose pictures you have taken and uh, getting awards. So uh, we photographers are very selfish people. We take pictures of people, but we never think of giving back anything in return. So this is one uh, small thing that if you can do, it does not cost a lot of money, but if you can do this, it can really make a lot of difference. Do you agree with what I am saying? Yes. Yes. So uh, this Turtuk, there's a village, there's a last village in India that's called Turtuk. So it was one time in Pakistan and uh, there was a wall and overnight it came to India. So the population is predominantly not uh, Buddhist people, they are uh, Muslim. They, they belong to a culture called Bharti. This whole place is a part called Pakistan. And uh, so those days when I went for the first time, so people were uh, you know, very open and very friendly. And now it has become very difficult because more tourists are going and the culture is changing. and uh, but it is still very easy for me to connect to them because every time I go there, I bring pictures for them. Okay, so, so all the kids, you see, it's, it's always a fun. So people come with me. So it's like a small uh, festival in the village where I am going, and then uh, people, uh, these kids are coming after me and uh, escorting to the places uh, to the people whose pictures belong to. Now this girl. So I went to this place uh, in 2009 and I had this picture and uh, I was just looking around and some people were guessing who is it and so I had to spend some time and then finally I found the girl. So she was seeing her picture after 10 years. So I, this year I gifted this uh, print to her. So she was uh, very happy to see it and how she has grown from a kid to a you know a college going girl. So this was this was shot in in a village called near Tanpa, uh, Himachal Pradesh. And uh, I bought this picture of this girl and uh, she was not uh, ready to believe that uh, I had taken her picture before. And her mother was so kind that uh, she said that she would get us apples. And I said, no, no, we are a big group, so uh, we don't do, uh, do any kind of those things. 
So she brought apples for everybody. So she has, uh, they have these apple orchards and they, they brought apples for everybody. And uh, I, I really remember the taste of the apples. So every time I go there, I, I meet them. So now uh, they're like a, pa a part of my, I mean, I'm a part of their family. So they ask me to come and have tea. So this is one thing, so I always think that my pictures are not good enough. So how many of you think that your pictures are not good enough? Okay, a lot of us. So uh, one thing I would tell you is that you have to believe that you are good enough. Okay, and how do you, so maybe you have some very average pictures, but you see when you gift a print to people, you will see that your pictures are of some use. So you will get that confidence that your picture is, has been put into use by somebody. Somebody is valuing your pictures. And means once you have that feeling in you, you will go a long way in taking better pictures. Do you agree with what I am saying? Yes. Okay. So, so it's just about believing. And this belief, one way of getting this belief is to, to share your work with other people. The, the people whose work, you are, whose pictures you have taken. Okay. That is one way of doing that. So whenever you are taking pictures, if you are uh, not, I mean, of course, if you are also into commercial photography, you can also think about how you can bring a positive change in this world. Okay, so like uh, Vishwendra Sir was saying that he is uh, documenting, he has been documenting the picture of rocks since quite some time and how he is using his pictures to, to save the rocks. So there are uh, other ways also in which you can contribute as a, as a photographer. So I work with an organization called Rangde. So they give this micro, it's a microfinance company. So they give, they give loan to these uh, farmers who can't afford a big lakh or those, they don't need a big uh, loan of say a lakh or something. So, the, so these uh, vegetable vendors, they would, they would probably need a loan of 10,000 rupees. And uh, they, they take money from these money lenders and the interest rate is so high that at the end of the day, all the profit that they make, they have to give it back to them. Okay, so these companies, they uh, provide microfinance to these people. So, so I work with these. So uh, once we did uh, a photo workshop where uh, a photo work where we went to these villages where they have impacted impacted the life of these women, and uh, so we documented the whole thing. We we took pictures. <coughs> spent the whole day with them, we did an exhibition and uh, we raised a lot of funds from that which again went to win back the farmers in different places. Okay. And uh, so in this way you can think about, so today maybe I am giving you a homework. So you can go back and think about what you can do for others, how you can impact people with your photography. So I met a, just 10 days back I went to Delhi and uh, there are a lot of people that, who I have lost touch with. So I had a friend, a friend from school. So I thought this time I am going to meet him. So I went to meet him and uh, shot him and his beautiful uh, daughter. And I, I just took a point and shoot camera. And then, uh, but some of the picture came out quite well. So I took a canvas print and uh, shipped it to him. And he was so happy to see it. So my connection with him again uh, went to a different level when I gifted this print to him. Okay. So maybe you can, if you think that your pictures are not good enough, think about how you can bring a positive change in this world with your photography and definitely you will see that you will start believing that your picture, somebody values your work and when somebody, when you start thinking somebody values your work, you will see that you, there is no, no limits for you in taking great pictures. Thank you very much. <laughs>